This presentation is on P impeachment of witnesses with prior convictions. For purposes of our class, we will be looking only at rules 609A and 609B. I've split this presentation into two videos. In the first video, we're going to be looking at the rationale for rule 609 and also its importance. In the second video, we'll be focusing on the mechanics of the rule. Okay, let's first start, uh, start out with looking at where impeachment with prior convictions fits into the overall impeachment scheme. Use of prior convictions is another way of attacking a witness's character for truthfulness. So it's another way of suggesting that the witness might be lying to the jury. Here are the inferences. The prior conviction shows that the witness has disregarded the law before. That can suggest that the witness might similarly disregard the legal rule, hear the oath in court on the witness stand. And that can be used to suggest that the witness is lying on the stand to the jury. There's also a sense underlying this rule that a witness should not be allowed to present himself or herself as a model citizen. Rule 609 is a very complicated and difficult rule, uh, so it's helpful to keep a couple of key principles in mind. First, Rule 609 applies only to witnesses. This is an impeachment rule, and it is therefore only available against witnesses. It's helpful to keep this in mind because that will help you spot a 609 issue. You can only be using a prior conviction under Rule 609 if you have a witness who's testifying and is subject to impeachment. Second, Rule 609 only applies when the conviction is offered to attack the character for truthfulness. Again, this is an impeachment rule, and it's only the, the evidence's only legitimate purpose under Rule 609 is to attack character for truthfulness. The problem is that there is a much more obvious inference which the jury can use, uh, although they are not allowed to. And that leads us to our third basic principle which is that jurors will have trouble limiting their consideration of the conviction to the legitimate purpose of suggesting that the witness might be untruthful. Instead, especially in criminal cases where the witness is the criminal defendant, the jury is much more likely to engage in an improper uh, set of inferences. Okay? So what the jury is uh, very likely to do is to assume that if the defendant has a prior conviction, he's prone to commit crimes and therefore likely committed the crime charged. Under Rule 609, this inference is not permitted. Instead, the jury may use the conviction only to set, suggest that the defendant or the witness might be untruthful uh, while testifying. Because this uh, risk is so great, indeed empirical studies have now confirmed what trial lawyers, parties, and judges have always known, which is that evidence of a prior criminal conviction has a powerful influence on the jury. It won't decide the case on its own. In other words, a jury won't convict a defendant just because he has a prior conviction. But combined with other evidence, it can eliminate reasonable doubt. Okay, so these are very powerful um, uh, uh, influences on a jury and they lead to what's known as the defendant's cruel dilemma. If the defendant has a prior uh, conviction, he has a choice. He can choose not to testify or to testify. Okay, so he has to make a strategic choice. Does he testify or not? This choice is a very difficult one for the defendant and there are really no, no wins for the defendant here. If the defendant chooses to testify, then under Rule 609, he, he may well be impeached with his prior conviction. Okay. 
when the jury learns of the prior conviction, they are very likely, uh, despite any kind of instruction the judge might uh, issue, uh, the jury is very likely to assume he's committed crimes before, so he committed this one and convict. Some defendants, therefore, make the alternate choice, which is not to testify. However, if the defendant chooses not to testify, the jury is very likely to assume that he is afraid to, that he's hiding something, and that may lead them to find him guilty as well. Because there are so many risks, uh, especially for the criminal defendant, associated with impeachment with prior convictions, uh, this is a very high stakes rule and many compromises were made in crafting the rule. Uh, I want to uh, go over some of the key distinctions that are made in the rule and then we'll move from there uh, to the second video which gives uh, a more detailed overview of the mechanics of the rule. Okay, so in terms of the distinctions that are made within the rule, first of all, the rule uh, distinguishes wit witnesses based on status. Criminal defendants are treated differently from other witnesses. The reason for this is that evidence of prior convictions creates special prejudices for criminal defendants, as we discussed just a moment ago. Second, the rule also distinguishes based on seriousness of the prior crime. Misdemeanors are treated differently from felonies uh, because we assume that people who commit more serious crimes are more likely to lie. A third important distinction uh, is based on the type of crime. Crimes involving a dishonest act or false statement are considered to be especially relevant to impeachment so they are more likely to be admitted. Fourth, uh, the timing of the crime is also uh, uh, considered by the rule. Uh, convictions that are more than 10 years old are far less likely to be admitted under the rule. The rule also contains two other distinctions which we will not be covering in class but I just want to mention them here. First, uh, crimes that have been pardoned are less likely to be admitted uh, for impeachment purposes and juvenile crimes are less likely to be admitted for impeachment purposes. There are separate subsections in the rule for these points uh, but they come up very infrequently and we will not be uh, studying them in this class. Okay, that uh, concludes our discussion uh, of Rule 609's rationale. Uh, please take the short quiz on TWEN and then proceed to the next video on Rule 609 where we'll cover the mechanics and operation of the rule.